Thank you. Um, yeah, je compris. You told a, little, a lot of what I, I was supposed to, to, to say. So, um, j'ai compris. I started in 2000. It's used in many, many, uh, many places, many schools, uh, even on place where I didn't even uh, imagine it could be used, like in hospitals to do some re-education or stuff like this. So you can, uh, you can use it in many, many places. It was originally written in GTK and started the board to build quick in uh, January 19, uh, 2004. And it's still in progress. We will see how we are, how we are progressing on that. Um, I see something special about GCompre, it's that there is uh, also a, a commercial effort behind the, behind the project. We will see a little bit how it works, why, uh, why we do this. But um, originally the idea was to give an advantage to the GNU Linux version, because uh, if you do the same software and you provide it for free as in beer on Linux and on Windows, uh, then in schools how do you um, push the teachers or the administrations to make the effort to use Linux if they can get everything at the same level uh, on Windows. So the idea was to say if you want to stay on Windows because it's easier for you, it's okay, but uh, for me it's more complex to maintain and package a software for, uh, for Windows, so you will have to pay for it. And it's worth working a little bit. It helps to fund the development, it motivates the development, uh, and also it increases the audience because in some places, just being sold, it opens new door to, the, to, your, to your software. That's uh, strange, but uh, people, uh, some people or some places, they like to pay software. And if you don't sell the software, they don't use it. That's strange. Um, so the software started in 2000, so it's getting a little bit old, it started in GTK and uh, the idea was to bring the software to new devices that people are using, like uh, especially tablets. So um, last year we decided to rewrite everything and to do it in, uh, in QML. We reuse only the, the graphics the data set, all the activities, the logic of the activities, the algorithm, but of course we don't reuse any code which was in C and yeah. Python and now we are in uh, C++ and QML and JavaScript. So it's really, there is really no, nothing common. Um, it's a major effort and we took a lot of uh, requirements in the loop and say, like saying it can run in landscape or portrait mode which is quite uh, unusual for, for games on, uh, on tablets. Uh, it makes the things a little bit more complex to develop, but uh, we wanted to make it uh, well, uh, take the time to do it well, and it's easier to say, okay, all the screens will be this size, but uh, so doing this is more complex, but in the long run, we expect it to be more a very, a very good feature. The competition chain is in CMake, so it's easy to develop it. Uh, we develop it like a regular Qt application. Or the architecture of the software, we have a C++ core, in, uh, uh, which is in SRC core. All the QML activities are a specific, uh, have a specific folder. They are, uh, they are zipped in the RCC files, which is loaded at runtime by the, by the core. So the design of the software is quite uh, modular and quite easy to extend because we, we only distribute, if you look at the, the, um, the bundle, once you create a bundle, you will have a binary, uh, the executable, uh, one uh, RCC per activity and one RCC per translation. And uh, GCompre will uh, run uh, uh, all, all of this at runtime. So it's very clean at the distribution level. To create a new activity, if you want to, to collaborate on this, there is a little script, you, create, you, you run it, you will run CMake, you start GCompre and you will have just your activity which is uh, displayed and you can just start and all you have to do is to 
to change some QML files, and they did some QML files, so you have to do QML in JavaScript if you need more, uh, more code than the QML can, uh, can support. That's very easy to create an activity. In, um, in our porting, I found out that uh, at a typical activity in Q QML um, plus JavaScript takes half the size in line of code than what we did in uh, Python in the old version. And we have more features, more fancy graphics, animations, and so on. So the code is really clean, uh, smaller, easier to maintain. So it's very big, a, a, a big success. The technology is very, is very good. Status, we ported uh, 100 activities on the 140 uh, of the GTK version. We, um, we have, we got 60 contributors. Currently we have two, two students working on, uh, on GComplete, part of KDE uh, Summer of Code. Uh, we did a rework of the graphics. Some of you maybe have uh, helped us uh, get some fund and to pay, to pay Timote working on, uh, on the uh, redesign of, uh, of GComplete to make something more, more logic in terms of graphics. So it's a great success also that we've been able to get some funds to have uh, Timothée working uh, uh, more than a month on, uh, on GComplete to reduce the graphism. So that's very, that's very good. Uh, Android release in January 2005, so it's really, it's really new. So we had enough, uh, enough content to, to make an Android version. So that was the first uh, release of GComplete uh, in the wild. Um, We'll see how it works in terms of uh, distribution. 16 languages for the last version at 100%, thanks to KDE uh, translation team. We have reused all the content of the, of the old version to avoid uh, duplicating efforts when, we, when it was possible. Multi-platform. Uh, so what we found doing this, uh, doing GComplete and doing the sport, uh, Qt is very, very well in doing, uh, in, in doing multi-platform. We have very few uh, specific code just to handle the uh, distribution, the packaging, where we have to find the, where are located the RCC files. That's almost all the if death we have in our code. So it's, uh, Qt is really uh, holding its, uh, its, uh, its promise. Or <laughs> it's, uh, it's doing what it said it, it does in doing a very, very ex an excellent job in uh, doing a multi-platform uh, uh, environment. What we have to do is some uh, app purchase with here. There are some, uh, some specific stuff to do to, but here we are deeping, we are going deeper in, uh, in the integration of the different uh, uh, mobile platform and it requires uh, still, uh, still some work in terms of packaging. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of work, even if, uh, if Qt is very good to do, the, to do the software, you can really fast get, uh, get uh, GComplete to run on iOS, but then when you want to bundle it, to package it, to, to go to uh, be able to upload it on the store, it's, uh, it's where, the work is, uh, where the most of work is, is still ahead. So, of course, we want to have GComplete to run on as many platforms as, we, as it could, as, uh, as people are using. But it's quite hard to do because uh, if you don't have the hardware, you are out of luck. Maybe some contributors will package it. But uh, if you really want to, 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 to keep the effort going and to be like professional, you need to, to be able to provide the, the new binary as soon as there is a new release. So it's hard to just count off uh, on the community of 
someone has the hardware at the time, but six months later, perhaps the hardware is broken and you have nobody to make the package anymore. And you left all the users of this platform in the, in the dark and they, they cannot use the software anymore. So it's, it's quite uh, complex. You, if you really want to go um, professional, you need to have the hardware at, uh, at some point if you want to support a platform. So going, if you look at Apple, it's quite expensive to buy all the, all the gadgets you need to, to, to develop and test on an on, on on Apple platform. So you need to learn and integrate the tool chain. On Apple, you need to use Xcode. You, even if Qt did a lot, of, a lot to, to integrate and to avoid using the specific tools of each platform, at some point you have to use them. And it cannot do all everything for you. It does a lot, but not everything. And then there are a lot of work to maintain the, your product in the App Store. So it's more like a marketing, but well, we are doing everything, so we are doing the marketing, the communities. So it's a lot of work to create create product entries in the stores, to maintain them, to have the product being accepted. Uh, you have to follow up the remarks of the customers or users of the application. They say, this is not working, I want this, I want this. So you have to um, make some community around your product to make sure it's, uh, it's available, it's working, and um, it, takes, uh, it takes time to do this. And promotion. Uh, it's hard to find why uh, Gcompre is not number one. I, have <laughs> I don't know why on the store, on the app, uh, Android store, because it's where we have it for now. I don't know why it's not number one. They are before Gcompre on the store. They are applications that are for sure not as good as Gcompre, even if we are not perfect, but they are products. Uh, say why they are before us, I, I test the application and say it's just crazy. <laughs> we should be better, but why are they before us? I don't know. Uh, so I found out at some time that, uh, for example, I, I, I I did, I used the, in the title of the application, I, I, I used the Gcompre educational software. But the title of an application on the Android store, I found out it's the main um, referencing, the main index for, for, for the store. So Gcompre is not something that people are looking for. Or if they are looking for it, it's in the description and the product will, will come. But if they are looking for children or educational, or uh, if you don't have it in the title of your application, you will not be proposed. So I removed Gcompre from the title of the, of the application. So the application is educational software or, or educational for children, or I don't know, something like everybody use because <laughs> you cannot use just names that uh, people don't know. Um, why it comes, uh, why it becomes complex at the hard part of the, of the, of the development. Qt is perfect, but there are bugs. <laughs> and there are a lot of bugs and all different on each platform. Of course, they are a little, even if it's a, uh, it's perfect at 99.9% and this dot one percent are very, very annoying because it may be a reason not to ship your software or it may be a reason that uh, makes your software crash on some platform and it's very hard to... Uh, you cannot escape this. So for example, on Android, we, had, uh, we, we made some particles, which was very fancy, it works well, but on some devices, it crashes. So we removed the particles for everybody because we cannot know uh, which devices makes it crash and why we have, cannot find it. On Windows, uh, we could not find a suitable audio codec because we, we are using uh, OGVORBIS, that's a native audio codec because it's uh, a free software and that's the best for us. Um, but on Apple, you cannot use OGVORBIS. On iOS, you cannot use OGVORBIS. You have to use AAC. So we had to make 
to change the G complete to be able to work on AAC or OGVB, so everything is customizable at compilation time, so we can use a codec or another. But on Windows, we still don't know what to use, except MP3, but MP3, you have to pay royalties to distribute an application that includes MP3s. And we are not yet ready to pay uh, for, for this right. So on Windows, we, are, we have no sounds for now. Uh, on Mac OS X, uh, packaging a cute, cute apps, a cute app, apps is broken. When you try to, you, you can make a package and distribute it uh, out of the store, but when you want to upload it on the store, uh, Apple says your application is not, uh, is not okay because there is a, uh, a cute library that has an underscore in, in it. And say, you're locked. On uh, iOS, we have an SVG rendering that is doubled uh, on Retina display. We have, a, we have the demo uh, downstairs on the, on the G-Compute booth, you can see it. Uh, so we did open for this, we did open uh, bugs on, uh, uh, on Qt uh, bug tracker, but uh, no solution for this. iOS also requires a commercial cute, cute version to be able to bundle and distribute an application for iOS. Um, this, uh, this cost 30 euros per month, but uh, recently the DJI said that this version was not selling very well, so this, uh, this was kind of indie developer and it was not uh, worse for them to continue this, uh, this uh, product line and they say they will discontinue it and so developers will have to pay 350 euros per month to, to do this which is for g not uh, not uh, possible to pay it's, uh, it's too much for g so I paid the 30 euros so they, they changed the, this uh, they said you, you have up to Last of August, they still accept uh, people to join the program at 30 euros per month. But you can see it's like uh, it's very complex to to get there. We also on the, we also have contributors who try to go to look at other platforms like Selfish. We looked at uh, the Ubuntu mobile platform, we looked at uh, Jola, we, and uh, on each of these platforms, it's, uh, it's, even if Qt is there, even if we, you can really fast have G-Compree running, running on it. Um, if you want to package it and to make a product and to make it clean and to uh, not use use the correct version of Qt or something, it's always, always a little bit complex. And especially when we don't have the hardware, we will have to buy each of this hardware to be able to maintain it. Like I said, it's kind of complex to, to, to get there. Commercial approach. Um, Um, I started this in 2003, like I said on the, at first on Windows. So I sell uh, binaries on proprietary platforms. The demo version is, uh, is always available with all the contributed activities. So what I, I'm doing is that if people contribute uh, activities to GCompre, they are uh, in the demo version, so everybody uh, has them. Uh, all the activities that I do myself, I make them uh, as uh, they require a fee. But it's very easy to get uh, to access to everything on Windows. There is a code which is sent that uh, gives access to the full version. For Android, the APK is uh, easy to find on gcomplete.net slash download. If you just browse the files, you get to the, to the APK. So when I do releases, on, uh, I do announcement at uh, in the community, I give the links 
so people can who contribute and who participate in the community, they get the software for free, they can do whatever they want, they can, there is no limitations really. So only people who get it from the stores for Android or from uh, gcomputer.net for Windows or Mac OS X, they are required to, to pay. So it's very, it's very interesting. How it works, there are 30 downloads per day on gcomputer.net for the, for the Windows version, which is still the GTK version. They are about two sales per day, and uh, 30 school sales uh, in 2004. In what I require for schools, they, I sell about something like 50 euros for a school. So schools are, um, contact me and they say, I want uh, gcompy for all the school and I, I make them a quotation and they pay it and uh, so Android there is about 100 installations per day so we are 20,000 so far but there are 50 deinstallations per day so 100 is good, 50 is <laughs> less interesting uh, what happened is that uh, the, the Google Store, they, they count uh, an application as being installed if somebody keeps the application more than two days. So if you just download an application from the store and you uninstall it, it will not be counted as, as an installation. So it means that people uh, uh, are disinstalling GComplete, some people are leave, keeping it. Um, some people don't like the application, maybe it doesn't work on their platform, maybe it is not what they expected, I don't know. The rating is quite good, 4.35, uh, so there is a rating on 5. There is about 2 sales per day, which is about the same number of sales that uh, what, uh, what, what I have on, uh, on Windows. But on Windows I sell it uh, 9 euros. Uh, on Android, I sell it uh, 6 euros, but on Android, Google takes 30% and uh, there is a, a VAT of 30% uh, also, or 20%. So on 6 euros, you get uh, 3 euros.5, which is quite less. <laughs> um, some numbers, it's, uh, yeah, it's very popular in France, I don't know why. Um, because of the name. Because of the name. <laughs> yeah, or perhaps because I'm French and uh, I, I do a better uh, marketing in French, in French or French sites or whatever, I don't know. Uh, we do everything in English, so it should be as popular in uh, all the countries that is, that is in France, but it's not. Uh, maybe a cultural application, maybe there are some cultural uh, uh, effects that I put in the software that makes it the software more Frenchy, more. The popularity is growing uh, in other countries, very popular in, Russia, in Brazil, Spain, and uh, Russia. Many, many countries are, this is growing, so. That's quite good uh, to see the software uh, moving, moving on like this. App Store ranking. Uh, that's, uh, what, what doing Google uh, on, uh, on their store is that they, they, um, they stop the ranking at 500. So if you are less than 500, you don't know what you are. You don't know where, where you are ranking. So they are looking at by countries, they have stores by, for each country, and you can see where you are. Uh. So it's a lot of work when you, we started uh, doing everything again in uh, last year. We, we were looking for about uh, two years of work to complete the port. Um, not sure we will achieve this at the end of the year, perhaps we will have uh, completed the port, maybe not, but uh, we are getting closer and the project is very dynamic and active. 
and we are really willing to kill the GTK version and having a, because the GTK version is still maintained, there are new versions of the GTK version on a regular basis. When we have bug reports, I continue to package it and maintain it, so I will have to just kill it and do only the cute version to be better. Uh, what we are looking at, we had something like this in the GTK version, is a teacher console, so that the, the software can be really used in a, in a in teacher environment, and especially with tablets, um, where the teacher have to be able to, let's say we are, we are in a classroom with children, and you have tablets, and it's hard for the teacher to know if the children are doing the exercise or not, and we really have to provide something so that the teacher can uh, just control a little bit what, what the children are doing on the tablets. We need you. <laughs> uh, that's uh, community is very important for us because if uh, we don't have any marketing or uh, marketing team or anything, so if uh, if you talk about GComprey, to about uh, in your community teachers, news site about uh, about uh, about Linux in your in your country, that's very very important for us to to give us some visibility and so that people uh, find GComprey, test it, find if it's useful for us, for, for them. What's also important is to have the, the voices. We, want, we really want GComprey to work in as many languages as possible. There is a lot of effort to support uh, language, even minority languages that are in, in small group where they want to keep alive a language. Uh, GComprey is a very good tool for them because uh, that's a quality software and they can uh, uh, translate it and they can put the voices on it. So we have everything uh, in place to, to accept uh, contribution in terms of translation, of course, but in terms of, of voices. And uh, this week I made a new website, a new page to have a, a summary of all the voices translation in which country now we can know uh, where uh, what's missing, what voice is, miss, uh, is missing for in each country. If you want a, a MIG, um, I provide for everybody who want to contribute to voices, I can send you and I offer the MIG like a semi-professional MIG so that you can get the MIG at home and make the voices when you want and continue to provide updates and uh, if you want a mic, I just buy you and I offer, I, I offer the mic. How many? How many mic? Uh, there is no, how many? Uh, currently there is one in, uh, in, in England. There is one in France for the German voices. And there is one in Brazil. So, I'm done. If you have questions. You can show it a little bit. No, because it's not my computer. Oh, yeah. So, questions? I This year it has been accepted in, uh, in extra gear, so we are no more in uh, KDE review. So we are in extra gear. The official repository is KDE. So if you go on gcompy.net developers and you search for the, the Git, it will be KDE1. But we are maintaining a, a mirror on GitHub so that some contributors can just fork the project easily and uh, provide pull, pull requests. Uh, where do you get most 
uh, KD. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> KD, because, uh, well, mostly people who just make a small contribution, uh, GitHub is fine. But if we want, uh, if this person wants to make uh, regular contributions, then they will be integrated by us uh, in the KDE process. But for small, just one shot contribution, it's just not very interesting to make this person, if she's not interested to, to participate in the KDE community, it's not worth to make the effort. That's the idea. So you were once in first projects, you go through the incubator and being waiting to get the manifesto and everything until you reach uh, extra gear. Can you tell us a bit about your experience with that? Um, it was a pleasant experience. I had nothing bad to say about, uh, about it. I find it natural and, uh, and straightforward. I have no no problem, uh, no problem with this. Got some help. Every, every time I needed help, I could find somebody to, to, to help me moving forward. So it was just no problem. Yeah. 